So good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the, the 15th section of our monthly seminar of uh, Nigerian Society of Chemical Engin Engineers, the HSC group. Today, we have a very interesting topic that will be presented by one of our erudite professor, not from Futmina, but from Ahmad Bello University Zaria. So he will, he will try to link education and HSE in today's talk. As usual, we have the normal, we have protocols that go with the, with the presentation. The agenda, the, the agenda of today, the agenda of today is we have the opening prayers, safety moments, introduction of the speaker, presentation, pre presentation by the speaker, questions and answers, recap, then um, closing, closing prayers. To start, to start this program today, I will call on Stephen Kubanuhu to give us the opening prayer. Shall we pray? <clears throat> Father, King of glory, we adore your name. We bless you. We exalt you. We thank you so much for uh, making it possible for us to hold this meeting Lord, we are in different countries on earth, and you have connected us to uh, technology. Lord, we ask of your guidance in our meeting. We ask of your protection. We ask of your direction, oh Lord. And if everything that we are going to discuss today, may it be to the benefit of the society and to our nation. Give us, the, uh, give us good utterances. Uh, utterances and uh, give us a, a direction. For we ask all this through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the prayers. So um, before I read, read out the profile of the, if I read out the profile of the, of the, of the today's speaker, I will, um, again, I will go back to another Futmina graduates again. To give us safety moments. And that will be um, Rukaya, Rukaya Musa Muhammad. She will give us safety moment in, for, for two, minute, two minutes. Please go ahead, unmute yourself and go ahead. Help come on, quickly. Good day, um, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to have all of you and to be amongst my erudite um, professors and colleagues. Um, we know that the most interesting thing that has happened and grounded the whole world. Can, 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 you, can you go ahead, please? 19. I'm speaking. Can you not hear me? Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So it's the COVID-19. So we'll quickly speak about um, managing towards it because, of course, the United Nations has given us different um, guidelines to do a lot of things to keep our uh, country safe, to keep ourselves safe. And the first and most important thing, especially when there's an outbreak, is to have um, uh, keep always keep a distance if you cannot stay at home. Maintain a distance of one feet. But now it's being revealed to about three, um, three feet for schooling, students in schools to avoid the spread. And then you should always wash your hands when you get home to avoid the spread of your um, touch, because we touch our face frequently. We want to do that to try to um, mitigate the spread of the virus should, for whatever reason, we contact it or pick it up on our hands. Then again, we should always wear our safety mask. If you notice now, it has become more a fashion statement instead of covering our nose it's covering it's becoming our second bed some of us will say oh we don't mind it's not around it's not here but really when you go to where they are facing the big outbreak like the European and North America you understand how serious it is and even on this platform we've had our very senior members passed from COVID in Nigeria uh, um, for my GM um, um, PPMC. So we shall please adhere to safety protocols. May we all be safe and may we see the end of this pandemic. Thank you, everyone, and keep safe. 
Thank you, thank you very, thank you very much, Rukaya, Engineer Rukaya. I mean, she has drawn our attention to the importance of us sticking to the pro protocols required for COVID-19. So at this point, I welcome our, our, our president of our Nigerian society, Engineer Wazir Said, our, our immediate past president, the past president of our great association, our, our fellows, members, friends, you're all welcome to today's presentation. I hope um, at the end of today, you will have enjoyed the, the, the presentation that um, Professor Elia Kubu is going to give. So at this point, I'll, I'll go through Professor Baba Elia Kubu abridged CV, abridged profile. I'll, I'll go through his abridged profile. Professor Baba Elia Kub Jibril is a professor of chemical engineering from the great Ahmad Bello University, Zaria. He is a product of the famous science secondary school, Dawakin Tufa Kanu. He obtained his Bachelor of Engineering from Ahmad Bello University in 1992, MSc from, the, from University of Petroleum and Mineral Study in Saudi Arabia, and PhD from University of Salford in 2021, all in chemical engineering. For about 20 years, he has worked as a lecturer, researcher, and consultant in the Middle East. He had spent time working in Saudi Arabia and Sultanate of Oman, where he had been involved in teaching and research. He has researched in works in petroleum, his, his research works are focused mostly in petroleum refinery catalysis, materials design, process simulation, stroke technology, feasibility studies of biofuels, and has fervent interest in higher education, higher education quality assurance. And that's what he's going to give us a talk on today. In this area, in these areas, Professor Elia Koub has published internationally internationally or presented over 100 papers. His team's, his team's research work was the first to show the potential of deep eutectic solvents in, as, a, as, as, a, as a solvent for, bit, for upgrading of bitumen through heavy oil. While, <coughs> this, while in Sultanate of Oman, his team received Oman National Award for the innovation, for the innovation, for the innovative application of DS, deputetic solvent, in enhanced oil recovery. Again, during his sojourn in Saudi Arabia and Oman, <clears throat> he had used his his grants, his side grants, to train over ten PhD holders currently in Nigerian universities. So we thank you for what the, your contribution in manpower development. In, in Nigeria. He is the current PTDF chair professor, professor at Ahmad Bello University, which focuses on catalysis, zeolite, de zeolite development, application of Hereka zeolites, biofuel production, and catalytic upgrading of Nigerian bitumen. In this capacity, he leads a team of over 20 postgraduate students and colleagues. He is currently a core consultant on process design for the production of bioethanol to meet Nigeria's E10 policy. His, his, his team current research works are developing low cost green solvent for enhanced oil recovery, sponsored by TED Fund, development of a stable catalyst for conversion of propane LPG to aromatics, sponsored by a Petroleum Te Technology Development Fund. Three, production of high purity hydrogen from the rice horse, from the rice horse <coughs> in Nigeria. To cap, to cap this all, his Google, his Google scholar, scholar, his H index is 23, with the I, I10 index 47. For those not in the academics, I want to put the context of these numbers for you, for you to understand better. What, I, what, what it implies is that this we, we have among us today 
a top world class researcher where you have more than more than 2000 citations of his of his work he is he is NU, NUC current program stroke institutional accreditation panelist he was an inaugural member of Corrine's engineering accreditation board he is a resource person for Corrine current current effort to mainstream outcome based education in nigerian university he belongs to several national and international professional organizations, including the Material Science and Technology Society of Nigeria, Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers, Nigerian Society of Engineers, and also he's a registered Korean, Korean member. Eli Akub was a member of Federal Government, Federal Government of Nigeria Vision 2020 Committee in 2008. In April 20, 2016, he was appointed member Specialized Committee for Engineering Stroke Technology by the Governing Board of Nigerian National Merit Award. He was, he was the head of the Department of Chemical Engineering at Ahmad Bello University between 2017 to 2019 and acted as, as an inaugural head of, head of Chemical and Petroleum Engineering Department at Bayero University, Kanu. He is the editor in chief of Nigerian Journal of Engineering and a, and, a, and a reviewer for several local and international journals. El Yakub was the production manager of Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineer Journal while he was working while, while he was working under the NSH inaugural executive secretary between 1992 to 1994. On behalf of Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers. HSE Sectoral Group, I highly welcome our erudite scholar, Professor Baba Jibril Eliaku, as our guest speaker today. Sir, you are welcome. So, uh, you uh, thank can... you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for a very generous introduction. And also, I would like to thank the society, especially the HSE group, for this invitation. It's my honor to present this. A seminar, a very brief seminar actually, for about 35 minutes on this very important topic. The title of the presentation is Outcome Based Education An Opportunity to Address Process Safety in Chemical Engineering Curriculum in Nigeria. And uh, I'm very happy, I can see among the audience is uh, Osman Obakazari, an expert on this subject. So at the end of the day, we will be able to have get together and see what we could do in practice. Talking about outcome-based education, I will start with uh, the outcome of my presentation. I expect participants in this seminar at the end to take home the following outcomes, and this is all about outcome education. At the end of this presentation, in about 35 minutes, you should know the current situation of chemical process safety in Nigeria, a brief on what's going on right now. Number two, you should know what is OBE, outcome-based education. Number three, what are the potential of OBE in inculcating process safety culture among our graduates? And finally, you should be able to identify current program outcomes. I'm going to introduce them and see where we can now talk about safety in terms of knowledge, skill, and attitude that we would like to inculcate in our students. And finally, perhaps if there is none among the current outcomes, can we suggest another outcome? that can be included in the current program outcome. Uh, following this outcome, uh, the uh, outline is my outline. Again, I have about five items there. Just mirroring the outcomes, I'm going to give brief on the process safety in Nigeria, and then what is OBE and its relevance to chemical process safety. How can we use the current uh, OBE approach to inculcate the KSA, knowledge, skill, and attitude for our graduates? And then I would point out the actionable point the NSH is supposed to take to really achieve the objective of process safety education in Nigeria. And finally, I would give summary of my outlook on this very important subject. And everything will be summarized actually because we have about 35 minutes. Now, when we talk about process safety, we need to start from the general uh, definition of industrial safety. 
where we have measures action taken to protect personnel and assets from effect of hazard, potential risk to personnel and asset. The industrial safety is divided into two major categories. We have occupational safety, and many of us are aware and familiar with occupational safety, whereby we talk about individuals, Hello. And the likely effect uh, of hazard on these individuals. What's important about the occupational safety is it occurs more frequently, but the effect is much, much lower. On the other hand, process safety or chemical process safety is defined as a blend of engineering and management knowledge, skill, and attitude that are very important to focus on pro prevention of catastrophic accident in the processing, handling, and use of chemical related products. You can see here the important point about this definition is we have a blend of both the engineering and management knowledge. And then, of course, we are also trying to emphasize the issue of catastrophic accidents that are really prevented. And also, for chemical engineers, we have to keep in mind this involves the processing, handling, and usage. So, if you, for example, look at the issue of petroleum production, anything right from handling the crude oil, the storage, the processing, the gasoline, diesel, even the usage, the LPG, etc., are all part of what we should be concerned about. And how do you prevent catastrophic accident? Uh, chemical process safety, uh, in particular, becomes important after the Bofal disaster in 1984. We are all aware about the Bofal disaster, and that triggered the process of focusing actually on how do we handle the issue of safety because that was a very important PR disaster for chemical engineers worldwide. So therefore. The American Institute of Chemical Engineers in 1989 established CCPS, Center for Chemical Process Safety. The most important objective of that center is to really follow the issue of safety, develop guidelines, document cases, and enlighten the public and practitioners about how to establish safety procedures and processes. And in line with that, CCPS further established SACHE in the USA, whereby the students and teachers are trained on issue of safety. So that as a student studying chemical engineering, as they graduate, already they have necessary skill and knowledge and attitude with respect to safety. And then uh, recently, I'm very glad to observe that Nigeria, under the leadership uh, in Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers, leadership of Dr. Arine, started what is called the Process Safety Initiative of Nigeria, whereby all this issue of our safety will be looked at and see how do we improve the practice uh, in Nigeria. So essentially, the PSIN has many observations, developed um, objectives, and recently it has been registered by corporate affairs of, uh, of Nigeria. But the important observation are two. Number one is it has observed very far awareness in process safety industry about safety in Nigeria, except perhaps petroleum companies. Second point is there is really lack of opportunity to inculcate engineering, management, knowledge, skill, and attitude on process safety in undergraduate education, which is very important because we need to start from the universities. And therefore, here I'm trying to point out that these gaps, especially the issue of education, can be achieved, can be bridged through what is called outcome-based education. So I'll just show two slides to emphasize what they mean by outcome-based education. For those who know, it will be a repetition. For, for those who don't, just follow uh, just two, two slides. Number one important point that we need to remember is it's not much new when we talk about outcome-based education. It's just a matter of emphasis. So we are saying here all the learning activities when we, it comes to education, teaching, assessment, documentation, everything should be geared so what not only what teacher can teach, but what the student really can, can take home, what they can do, and then at what standard. And it's very important because you can all pass through education, but the question that we have to answer is, what can you do after that experience and at what level of knowledge? We are, some of us are aware about the uh, Bloom taxonomy. We can see the level of knowledge that a student has. 
there's no time to go into details. Second point is OBE expect that our curriculum is supposed to be restructured so that we can now look at the teaching and assessment and uh, reporting practices in education to reflect achievements of learning and the mastery level rather than accumulation of, of credit. As you can see, this is completely different perspective when it comes to education. We don't talk about how much credit hours, hours have you covered. We talk about how much the student know in terms of knowledge, in terms of attitude, in terms of skill. And I'm going to explain how that can be related to deceptive. Now, next slide summarizes the whole story. I don't want to take your time, but in the outcome-based education, we have the input, teaching, curriculum, lab, and other things. Then we have teaching and learning process where this input are converted into what you have as graduation students. But the important requirement now for OB is that we have what is called program outcomes. The attribute that a student must display, they must show at the end of their study. We call them short-term objective or program outcomes. Another important requirement of OBE is that we need to have also the long-term outcomes, which we call program education objective. So for example, if I would like some my graduate to have something three to five years after graduation, we should try to teach them in the university so that three to five years, they should be displaying this behavior, this attribute, these characteristics in terms of safety, for example, in this case. And the important point regarding the what they will do in the actual practice is that stakeholders are involved. Unlike the current practice where teachers decide what to teach, in the OBE, the stakeholders are really involved. What are, who are the stakeholders? It could be something like Korean, in terms of regulatory body, it could be NUC, for example. And in this discussion, we are talking about NSHE. If you like to have safety awareness among our graduates, we should put it as part of our objectives so that as we teach students, we are preparing them to have this safety, consciousness, attitude, and culture as you go to the uh, industry. And of course, we can take input from our employers, from others, uh, stakeholders. Another important attribute of the OBE is that our assessment process will try to look at how the student learn anything with respect to what we, are, what we are trying to achieve. For example, we can assess the curriculum, we can assess the teaching and learning process, we can assess the graduate in terms of what we expect them to know. In this case, for example, process safety. We can also look at the project we are giving the student. Are we giving them project with respect to the thinking, uh, safety thinking in the project, for example? Or are we giving them projects that have not, nothing to do with, uh, uh, with safety? All these are part of what is required, and we will not go into detail, but we have opportunity here as we implement OBE to really put inside whatever we like to know, what, whatever we like our student to be able to do in terms of process safety uh, in, in the country. Now, as you just to emphasize before leaving this slide, we have short term program outcomes. We have what you call long term program objective. Unfortunately, these program outcomes are already available. Korean Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria already has been working on this OB initiative. It's only a matter for us now to join in and try to emphasize whatever we'd like the student to be able to do as they graduate. Korean is doing this for three important reasons. Number one, as I emphasized, OBE is used to achieve specific and measurable knowledge, skill, and attitude that are for engineering graduates, that are good for engineering graduates, whatever you'd like them to know. Whatever you like students to be able to do, you, as you, you, you define them and you put them together in OBE. Point number two, why Korean is interested is because OBE is part of requirement for is has been working on general Washington Accord. The requirement, one of the requirements is the OBE, is that OBE can be an effective means of inculcating process safety in education, uh, in chemical engineering, teaching, learning process, and in the curriculum. So let me quickly take you through the Korean program outcomes and point out where process safety can be used or can be inserted so that our students will come out with the knowledge, skill, and attitude in process safety, among many other uh, possible uh, topics. Uh, here are the Korean 12 program outcomes. And they are available in our BMAS. BMAS is benchmark for minimum academic standard. 
available in all chemical engineering departments in the country. And I will not go into each one of them. I will only point out those that I believe are potentially useful for process safety in teaching uh, and learning process. I will start with number three, which is very clear. Number three says a graduate of an engineering program to be accredited by Korean is expected to have ability to look at number three, profile solution for complex engineering problem, etc. etc. The last one says appropriate consideration for public health and safety, which means it's already there in the outcome. It's only a matter for us now to see at what level are you going to approach this outcome? Do we introduce the subject? Do we want it at a mastery level? Do we want like student to be able to design or do we want to have fundamental knowledge about safety? But it is there in the outcome. If you go to number four, number four, similarly, I have underlined a section of number four that talks about the issue of um, safety. As you can see, the graduate of engineering in Nigeria University should be able to conduct investigation into complex engineering problems using research-based knowledge and research method in calculating, including design of experiment, analysis, and interpretation of data. And as I emphasized, CCPS, the center I mentioned in the USA, the, the part of their mandate is to look at cases and interpret data and results so that they can avoid safety issues in the future. So in this outcome, we can teach a student to be able to interpret some raw data to point out the safety potential or uh, accident potential of a particular situation. Also number five, within the modern tools, you can now bring out there are many different software tools that can be used for safety. So we can use that, those tools for students to be introduced to safety culture in our Nigerian universities. I'll not go into detail. Number six, you can see number six, very interesting as well. It said that a graduate from Nigerian university should be able to apply reasoning informed by contextual knowledge, including humanities and social sciences to assess societal and health, safety, legal and cultural issues. So again, it is expected that in number six, that as we teach our students, we should be able to inculcate the issue of safety once they produce any uh, product or process. Number seven as well, has safety there. It says that a graduate from Nigeria University should be able to understand the impact of professional engineering solution in societal and environmental context. Whenever I talk about impact, we are talking about impact to personnel, impact to society, impact to the process uh, situation, impact to the cost, whatever. So you can see we look at the impact from different perspectives. As we teach chemical engineering students, we look at the impact from different perspectives. One of them is the safety, health, society, economics, etc. So again, number seven is an opportunity to really talk about safety and inculcate safety in the uh, graduate. Number eight is similar, talking about the, the graduate should be able to apply ethical principles and commit to professional ethics and responsibilities and know of engineering practice, including adherence to the Korean Engineers Code of Conduct. And among the Korean Engineer Code of Conduct is the issue of safety. So again, we can bring out this Code of Conduct, point out why Korean as an institution is expecting a graduate to be able to consider and implement the safety requirement in whatever he or she uh, produce or operate on. Number 10 as well has issue of communication because sometimes the safety issue is to do with communication. As I'm going to point out what happened in Bofal. Part of the problem in Bofal was there was no communication to the outside world, despite the clear danger, or despite the fact that the problem started, but no communication to the uh, community. So it's important also to, as we talk about communication, students should be able to be able to communicate their own understanding of the situation to the larger co community. The last one, where I also I can see the benefit for process safety teaching is it says a graduate from Nigeria should be able to recognize the need for and have the preparation and ability to engage in independent and lifelong learning in the broadest context of technological and societal changes. Again, safety is very important here because one thing about safety is dynamic changes. Something that is considered safe today, tomorrow may be considered not, depending on the severity, depending on the toxicity, etc. So the student should be able to know that whatever you do in a process, every day, you keep in mind the current understanding, current knowledge, current development, that will make whatever you're doing to be whether safe or not safe, or even the safety degree can be, can be, can be changed. The procedure can be changed. 
the government requirement can be changed, etc. So these are 12 current outcomes. And I have put here number 13 with question mark in case that despite the potential in this 12, there's a need for us to really include another one. Because once you have a current outcome, society like society, the Nigerian Society of Computer Engineers can now add another outcome specific to that society, to that uh, profession. For example, we can put safety there. We can put whatever that we feel our special graduate in chemical engineering need that particular outcome, for example, for safety. So these are the 12 outcomes. And already we can see about eight of them, they have relevance to process safety. Now, what are the causes where this outcome can be now be uh, inserted and we consider the issue of safety? Here I have pointed out some few causes. The most important one is the um, introduction to geo engineering. As you can see in the introduction, this is where we talk about process safety. We look at examples and case study. So our our undergraduate student will see the potential of producing money from combination of raw materials to product. At the same time, they could see potential of danger in case of something goes wrong. So it's, it's very important, of uh, course, to introduce the issue of safety in general. Number two, chemical reaction engineering is another important cause where, because in many cases, safety issues are because of change in certain temperature changes, maybe pressure increase due to production of gases, sometimes actually running, running away because of high temperature uh, problem, etc., etc. So we can point out reaction problems and how reaction, if not controlled, could lead to explosion and could lead to corrosion, etc. Another important cause that we can use for safety issue is the chemical engineering thermodynamics. And in fact, I can argue that if we look at, look at second law and third First law and second law of thermodynamics, we can always relate it to safety. Whenever you see explosion, is a system that is trying to minimize energy. Whenever you look at the issue of mixing, is issue of entropy. So you can bring this concept the student to understand them within the context of safety um, applications. Next is material engineering. Again, whenever I see material failure, we talk about the electrochemical reaction, the corrosion, the meteorological issue, defects in materials, and therefore we can always point out how the material engineer can be understood to be able to control visual safety. In fact, sometimes you have all the stress on your material that can lead to crack. And after cracking, you have leakages, etc. Then you have problem. Next is unit operations. Again, we can also look at examples in unit operations where mixing or where temperature control are all important in terms of controlling system to avoid safety issues. The last two are the most important because we put process control requirement in our operations so that we can always operate with a certain range of conditions. And in many cases, if we go away from these conditions, not only do we lose the, 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 the quality of our product, but we may end up into regions that can lead to hazard. And therefore control is very important in establishing the fact that processes must run at certain temperature, certain pressure, and certain concentrations. The last one is the most important. I can see I have highlighted number the last one, process and plant uh, design. In fact, uh, this is why chemical engineers can do whatever they can, whatever is, uh, is available in their knowledge to make sure that whatever they produce in terms of design is safe so that this, the, the, the public can now have a very safe process, plant, reactor, distillation column, exchanges. And I'm, I'll introduce you to the issue of inherently safer design. Many of us are aware about this, but this is a very important subject because uh, different institutions, different chemical engineering departments are emphasizing this issue. In the first place, our design is supposed to be inherently safe. And this has four important principles. Number one is whenever you design any process, any unit, we make sure that we minimize potential for uh, danger. Try to minimize chemical reaction, temperature, whatever, to avoid safety issues. Or substitute from hazardous raw material to less hazardous raw material, or moderate, or simplify. These are the four principles for inherently safer design, which we should try to inculcate in our students so that once they graduate, they become the engineers that are going to run the companies. So therefore, safety uh, is always at the back of their mind. And if you look at this figure, you can see the central, uh, uh, the central issue is the design and control. 
So if we inherently design our system to be safe, that is a starting point. In case we want to have additional layer of protection, we now put control, basic control, temperature, pressure, BID, et cetera, control, that make sure that the system operates as designed. And then beyond that, we have our alarms and manual intervention that can now complement our uh, basic control system. Above that, we have what we call ISS, Intelligent uh, Safety System or Automated Safety System. And this will try to make sure that whatever you miss in the lower layer is taken care of in the higher layer. And then you have physical protection, then you have emergency response, and finally, of course, we have community response. And one thing important about this uh, cascading layer is that each one is important because each one can give you additional protection. In fact, what happened in Bofal in 1984 was the fact that there was no community communication. People were not, who didn't know actually what was happening until they started inhaling that important chemical. I'm going to show it later. So this is a very important summary of the whole story. And I expect each and every department of chemical engineering to be talking about these issues so that the student will be aware about the importance of protecting the public from our own creation, because we are those who are creating uh, these monsters. Mm -hmm. Now, what can we learn from uh, Bofal? Just a summary of the story. It happened in December, uh, 3rd of December, 1984. And the important point is the Bofal, you can see here, is at the center of India, near New Delhi. And you can see the chemical methyl isocyanate was produced, was being produced to kill insects. It's part, like, it's part of the mixture for pesticide. Uh, and, and insecticide. But unfortunately, that night, due to some problem at the location, it ended up killing people. As you can see, it killed more than 10,000 uh, in three days. And later on, by 1994, it killed about 25,000 people. Oh, right. And still, you have uh, right. mothers producing babies with defects due to that particular uh, instance. And in fact, uh, it's very important for us to look at this. Look at the, how big is the area the area that has been affected. And I can imagine if there's any leakage from Kaduna refinery, how many people will be affected? I can imagine if the biggest refinery in the world, there's any leakage, what happened to people in Lake you know, around the area? So it's very important for us as chemical engineers to keep this in perspective and try to participate in developing the safety issue. What can we learn from Bofal? Some few points, I will not take your time. Point number one that we can learn is avoid use of hazardous material. Minimize stocks of hazardous materials. This line was our inherently safe design principle. It says what, it, what you, you don't have cannot leave. So try to avoid keeping live storage of dangerous chemical. Point number two is we always carry, carry out hazard analysis. Sometimes we you know, but it's good to point out at each point, how can we avoid uh, safety issue? We should train operators not to ignore unusual readings. Can you see? This is where the education comes in. Our OBE, our combat education should emphasize so that our graduate will go out to the industry, keeping in mind the importance of don't ignore you know, any unusual reading. And then, of course, we should keep our protective equipment in working order. What happened in Bofal, two, three different layers of protection were not working that day. And unfortunately, the disaster happened. And finally, of course, we should keep building uh, away from the major hazardous area. As I mentioned before, what happens if there's any leakage from canoe refinery, or what happens if Dangote refinery goes out of control and there's leakages from Dangote refinery in Lagos, what happens to people in nearby areas? Uh, we have to think about that, and I'm sure uh, PSIN can, can, can help on that. Um, let me give you examples of what I teach my students in issue of safety in design, just to give you a perspective of what can be done. For example, when you come to select raw material, this is well-known heuristic, select raw material and chemical reaction to avoid or reduce the handling and storage of hazardous and toxic chemicals. This is what I teach every day in my course at ABU called Chen 531. For example, you would like to produce um, ethylene glycol, very important chemical, antifreeze, and it is for many applications. The starting point is to have ethylene plus oxygen giving you ethylene oxide. And then you have second reaction, whereby ethylene oxide is reacted with water to give you ethylene glycol. But the problem is the second reaction is very violent, highly isosamic. If it's not controlled, what happens is it can lead to a disaster similar to that of a fall. 
And unfortunately, we always produce the ethylene oxide before taking it to secondary acid to produce ethylene glycol. And unfortunately, when water gets in without control, it will of course be fried and there will be explosion. So alternative is to consider, for example, another route. Can you say another route? Ethylene plus chlorine plus sodium hydroxide gives you the same ethylene glycol. The only problem here is you are consuming very extensive chlorine and you are wasting it into sodium chloride. So if you look at the economics, you find that there is cost implication, but from a safety perspective, we avoid ethylene oxide. Another uh, approach is to have our ethylene oxide, which is intermediate, reacted with sodium, sorry, carbon dioxide to give you ethylene carbonate. Ethylene carbonate is safe and keep it and you can easily hydrolyze it back into ethylene glycol. And again, it means you have additional step, you have additional reactor, but then of course it's going to be safe. So these are kind of examples that we should be giving our students that whenever they have project or they have any analysis, they should keep in mind the safety issue, the potential danger, as well as the issue of economics and other considerations. Finally, I will summarize my submission and give my outlook. The important point is outcome education is a very important vehicle for inculcating knowledge, skill, and attitude for process safety culture. It is a matter of developing the topics, maybe recommending books to the universities, maybe engaging the universities so that they can really emphasize the issue of safety in their teaching and learning process. Number two, I have identified eight different program outcomes from Korean BMAS that we can use now to teach aspect of process safety. And therefore we can empower our, our graduate to be able to be ready for work, work, work environment. Because it's, as it is today, our students are not really aware about safety culture in the country. Number three, yes. Korean is deploying OB in Nigeria. And uh, I called on PSI, PSIN to really join hands with the Korean to see how can we now bring in issue of uh, safety. Not only safety, anything that we would like to be in the curriculum. It's a time for us to join hand and therefore develop. As I said, in addition to the 12 outcomes, you can add more. It can be number 13, 14, depending on the profession, depending on what we'd like to have. Finally, the last one is okay. NSAP may consider student training and workshop and certification, similar to what is going on in the USA. In the US, you have the SACHE, especially for students, so that the student as they study in the university towards the end of their study, uh, 400 level, 500 level, they can now take some courses on safety, having a certificate. And then once they're looking for a job, they can now display their certificate to show how much they know about safety. And I expect the PSIN and society to consider this approach so that we can inculcate the issue of safety in our curriculum. And this uh, comes, brings me to the end of my presentation. And I thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I think um, I will, uh, you, you, have, you have actually done justice to this, bringing in outcome-based education. And why, why we need to modify our existing curriculum in HSE to reflect the need of the society. Thank you very much, sir, for your time and the excellent uh, presentation. Um, at this point, I will, you may, you, may, you may type in your question in the chat section if, if you so wish. Or you just, you just indicate and you, will, um, you can go ahead and I'll, I'll mute yourself once I, once I give you access. I'll mute yourself and your questions to Professor Elia Ku. But um, before I start taking questions, I have one or two things already written in the chat. One is from Professor Abdusalami Kogo. He said, he said, in Futmina, we have a course called Loss Prevention in Process Industry, where process safety is actually addressed. I believe all the chemical engineering department can look at that. So I'm sure um, Professor Elia Kup and, and uh, others will address what you have raised now, Professor. So, um, so no, 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 I'll, um, oh, oh, okay, you can go ahead. No, no, I, I, just to make a point that it's very important. I'm very happy that uh, in MENA, they have a course 
uh, that's addressing the issue of safety. But what is, in addition to that, of course, what we need to do and is a practice worldwide is to really put safety issue in all courses, in different courses. So that the student follows through the courses at each point, you know, in, you know, in teaching and learning, we have introduction, reinforcement and assessment. So we can now keep on inculcating the culture. But as they graduate, it's not only a single course, but in every course, reaction engineering, design, material, they all know about safety. In addition to that particular course, in addition to that, we should have other courses talking about safety. It's very important to inculcate because it's a culture. Safety is a culture. You, 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 you don't learn safety to memorize and pass the course and get A. No, we want to have student having the culture. By the time they go to actual industry, they already have the safety culture in their mind. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Then I have an um, engineer, Margaret Ogun, Ogun Tyler. She wants to speak. Can you kindly unmute yourself? Yes, um, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, first, I must uh, commend uh, Professor El Yakub for that um, very wonderful uh, presentation. Um, I want to speak on the, from the point of view of Corin, uh, being a council member of Corin myself. Uh, Professor El Yakub is a, a veritable resource person for Corin on the matter of OBE. And um, I, like he has charged NSCHE, I want to join him in doing that because NSCHE, as we all know, is uh, in the forefront of uh, professional development in, uh, among the committee of divisions of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. And right now, the um, uh, Koren has chosen some pilot universities for the OBE accreditation, you know, and um, fortunately, I see a lot of people from Footmina here. So Footmina is one of the universities. And of course, ABU where Professor himself is, um, Covenant University, Abwad, um, and I think uh, ABU, okay, of course I've mentioned ABU. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that this is an, a very great opportunity for the Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers to ensure that uh, process safety is uh, included in the curriculum um, so that at least we'll benefit, we'll be one of the first beneficiaries of the OBE in, uh, in Nigeria. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Engineer. Okay, go ahead, Professor. You know, just to thank her for this uh, very important intervention. And as uh, she pointed out, society really needs to look at the issue of safety because we have been talking about it, but it's an opportunity to really engage the departments. And I'm very happy that uh, FU Tibina, where my friend Dr. Apolabi is, he's also an expert on uh, OBE issues. So we can really find how do we really put it into the curriculum and teaching and learning process. It's very important. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I will now my I will now engineer Mahmoud Mahmoud Bella Bakar, the the lead, the chair of the HSE sectoral group of Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineer. So I think you raise your head. Go ahead, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes. I'm go ahead. Muted, sir. Is, is yeah. Um. I want to commend uh, uh, Professor Yako for for the eloquent uh, presentation. Just this morning, I participated in another uh, presentation by Edo Delta, which was presented by Professor Aluyo, the VC of um, Edo University, which also was centered on OBE, how OBE, can be used to enhance the entrepreneurial skills of engineers in order to prepare them to be able to be self-employed and to reduce the rate of unemployment. These two aspects, safety and entrepreneurship is actually very important for our young graduates, particularly now that um, the opportunities for employment for chemical engineers is actually shrinking as a result of the issues the manufacturing sector is experiencing. The process, um, uh, even the oil and gas is also shrinking actually in this country. So we have a big problem um, at hand. Now, um, he talked about uh, process safety initiative of Nigeria. 
um, the reason that you see that people don't know much about it, it is an organization that is actually yet to take off effectively. It's going to be inaugurated on the 30th of March. Uh, and after that inauguration, that activities will, will, will commence. And um, uh, maybe uh, Mahabud, last question. Yes, and Kina we lost you. Maybe engineer Mahmoud. Maybe he lost connection somewhere. Very okay, unusual he, will, of him. he will he will get back to us. But yeah, very very unusual. Okay, so I think um he he was emphasizing and he was emphasizing on what the VC of Edo Edo University is doing yeah. and the process safety initiative of Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineer, which is com which which will be inaugurated by <laughs> End of this month. Mm. Maybe if you want to make comments on those two, sir. No, I, I think it's in line with what we have been talking about. And as soon as the PSIN is formally integrated, I'm sure they will engage the academic environment, the uh, professors, to see how can we now go into the issue of teaching and learning of process safety in our curriculum. And I, I think uh, I look forward to the time when we can we can do that. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Then, um, engineer, engineer w Williams, can you unmute yourself? I can see your hand raised up in the chat section. Unmute yourself and ask your question, sir. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Uh, thanks to the guest uh, presenter, Professor Yakubu. Uh, I joined late, but I joined about midstream. Apologies. Uh, I thought I'd put this on my calendar and I was doing some other, other work and then I remembered. I, I just thought I should uh, bridge some of the gaps uh, with respect to some of the things that have been said here uh, regarding NSCG rule uh, with some of these issues regarding process safety. In 2018, uh, the society organized a workshop on uh, chemical engineering uh, education and curriculum, which was held at the University of Lagos. Uh, and uh, one of the uh, key decisions at that, uh, at that workshop uh, was for, I mean, uh, paying more attention to process uh, safety in chemical engineering curriculum in the country. Uh, this, the National Secretariat subsequently, I mean, passed on this to the Education Sectorial Group, uh, which uh, worked on uh, the various recommendations that arose from that event and another event. And um, the thing was compiled into a report which was circulated to all the chemical engineering departments uh, in the country. Regrettably, and that's what part of why I'm uh, raising this point here, since it will appear we have many of our colleagues from the universities uh, on the call. Uh, we did not get a response. The, the National Secretariat is here to get a response about the proposals that, that have been made. But I think as some of the other colleagues have mentioned, a number of universities already have uh, some elements of uh, process safety in their curriculum. But we believe that uh, working together, uh, we can uh, uh, send something to Koren, which is the regulatory body for the universities, uh, who will then approve this uh, for our various uh, tertiary institutions. Uh, it is also a realization of uh, the importance of the process safety in chemical engineering curriculum that the National Secretariat is also uh, encouraging uh, the student chapters uh, to join the AICHE student chapter so that they can have the opportunity to uh, take these courses that Professor El Yakubu mentioned. 
Uh, luckily, uh, University of Lagos students got registered uh, last year, and the uh, International Affairs uh, Committee, which is responsible for this, is trying to promote and encourage other student chapters uh, to join so that they can benefit from the various resources that are available on the AICHE website, in particular that one about uh, process safety, because there are a number of courses there. And when you complete this successfully, uh, the students will be issued the uh, certificate as mentioned by Professor uh, Yakubo. Another effort, of course, is the PSIN, which uh, the uh, sectorial group chairman was trying to talk about, and the inauguration will come up uh, on Tuesday. So I will rest it here for now. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I think uh, there were comments. I will take um, one, one more question from engineer Must Mustafa Ibrahim. Engineer Mustafa Ibrahim, can you unmute yourself? Go ahead. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Prof. Heliaku, for that wonderful presentation. Uh, there was a presentation in uh, about Femi Awolowo University during the weekdays. And uh, the workshop was uh, on GIA, which is a linkage between government, industry, and academia. Now, from a presentation on the OBE, which is uh, the outcome-based uh, education, on the facet of safety in chemical process, uh, basically it's to develop individual on the professional perspective. Now, all this has to do with how to revamp the economy. There should be a linkage within, between the academia, the industry, and the government. So I'm not talking about the government now, I'm talking about the academia and the industry. Now, if we want the outcome of the safety process to be enhanced, there should be that understanding between the academia what we're expecting should, that, that will come out of the academic uh, uh, environment to the industry via the students. In that case, we have to make sure that the, what the industries we have within our environment should be brought, bring closer to the students so that they understand the type of industries we have and what are the safeties that are involved. Otherwise, at the end of the day, will end up uh, inculcating the knowledge to the student, but not having the practical understanding of what is there in the industry within our environment. And that will also lead to uh, uh, the phobia of working in those industries by our student. How can we address or how can we link this, the OBE, chemical and non process with the GIA, which is the Government, Industry, and Academia Relationship in order to boost the economy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Engineer Mustafa. Prof, can you address this before I go to the last few questions from the chat? Prof, oh, okay. So, thank you. Thank you very much. And I really would like to thank Mustafa Ibrahim for this uh, very interesting perspective, uh, talking about GIA. Another name for it is uh, Triple Helix where yeah. you have the industry, academia, and government coming together uh, to make sure that whatever we do is relevant to the other two. Whatever one of them is doing is relevant to us. So as you can see, of course, from my chart showing the OBE, one of the important requirements is the input from stakeholders. So whenever any issue is being discussed by academia, the stakeholders, the industry advisors, the employers, etc., we must ask them about what are looking for. And one interesting uh, requirement of OBE is we are looking at three to five years after graduation. So it's a dynamic process. Every year we have to send a questionnaire and ask the industry, what are you looking for? What do you expect from a graduate? So that by the time they graduate, they are going to be of benefit to society. And uh, so in line with what you are saying, the, any university looking at safety in their curriculum, there's a need to politically through the Society of Chemical Engineers, through um, linking with industry to be able to really interact. And as the industry, what are the new tools? 
what are the new requirements, what are the new techniques that we need to teach our students. And therefore, as we teach them, the ability for the, for the, for the, for the, for the industry. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. So I'll quickly go through some of the questions in the chat, then, uh, then, we'll, then we'll have the wrap up. Um, Professor Maina from AB said, thanks for the presentation. We, we have similar uh, program course in ABU's area. Then um, we, ha we have, I have um, Olad engineer, Oladari Odejobi. We also do it, do it in ABU. Loss prevention in process industry is a course that the student in fine chemical engineering must take. From engineer Bashir, a very educative presentation prof. Thank you, sir. Then from Ade Jobi, thank you for the excellent presentation. Zaid Ibrahim, educative lecture. Thank you, Professor Elia Koo. Then um, we have engineer Patrick Nwosibi. Thank you, Prof, for the insightful lecture. Engineer Victor, informative lecture. Prof, thanks. Remy Olaleko, informative lecture. Thank you so much, Prof. Then from engineer Usman Garba in, in Paris. Historic, and he said, historically, Many safety issues in chemical engineering department across the world arise from storage and waste disposal, waste disposal issues. What obtains now in some of our institutions is that some students are allowed to dispose waste from their research on their own. Any efforts to improve in this direction? So, Professor Eliaku, please take notes. After I go through this, you address this question, sir. Okay, okay. And engineer Vivian Stowe, so she's, it's, it, she said, quite an enlightening presentation. Many thanks, Prof. Engineer Eitayo Afolabi says that for OB impl implementation to be successful, NSHE together with other NSE divisions have a vital role to play. There are many opportunities provided in the current OB accreditation manual to promote the synergy between the industry and the academia. Thanks. That's engineer Itayo Afolabi. Um, engineer Biliami Abdumumuni. Thank you very much, Prof, for the good educative presentation. Engineer Olubenga Susu Mobi, an excellent pre presentation, Professor Yakub. Many of the points raised in your presentation are pert pertinent and imperative to, to fast growing industrial nation. Engineer Dr. Shola Kolawale, great presentation by Prof. Engineer Tukru Lawal. Prof, many thanks for this excellent presentation. The industry has a lot, a lot benefit. The industry, the industry has a lot to benefit from engagement and advocacy with the with academia. I think engineer Tuku Lawal from Dangote is saying it's important that um, the academia and the industry need to work together, just like what an earlier speaker talked about GIA. Engineer Steven Kuba Nuhu. Thanks, Prof, for the informative and educative presentation. Engineer Mansur Suleiman, very educative, informative presentation. And thank you very much, sir. So, sir, I'll, before I wrap up, I'll just give you a few minutes for you to address one or two questions raised in the chat, sir. No, I think the, uh, what others are really comment. The question that perhaps needs to be addressed is the issue of our students, when they have projects, they may just dispose chemical without following the guideline and procedure. At least I know in my university we have safety committee, and I think uh, Dr. Osama Bakazaria at one time was the was the chairman of the committee for the right way to dispose uh, chemicals. But I, I think based on this question, maybe the society can have a way to really engage departments to make sure that because this is how you, you inculcate the culture. If a student disposes chemicals in the sink without any consideration, it means the culture is not really developed. So it's good really from the, that, that stage to be able to really uh, inculcate the culture in the student. So um, I can maybe ask, uh, Mahmoud is no longer online. Maybe uh, Prof. Williams, can you say one or two points for the societal point of view, not just the society of chemical engineers? I don't know whether Almodov Ad, William is online. Yeah, in, in case you have anything to do with this. No, no, no problem, sir. We, we will yes, learn. I'm, I'm online, but it, it, they are all part of the things that uh, uh, PS, PSIN will be uh, addressing. There is the industrial part, then there's also the educational part with regards to our 
our students in the in the tertiary institutions. Okay, okay. Uh, Thank as you. Uh, Engineer Mahmoud uh, indicated earlier on, uh, PSIN is just going to be formally launched uh, in the coming week. Uh, but certainly, as I also indicated, uh, the need to step up uh, focus and attention on, on process safety amongst our undergraduates as well as graduate students uh, is something that the NSCH national body is taking very seriously. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. I can see quite a number of people are requesting for the, for the slides um, of this presentation. One, um, all our previous 14 seminar, we have a YouTube ch channel, NSHE HSE. Please visit and subscribe to the, to the YouTube channel and you can watch, you, you, in the next few days, you'll be able to watch this today's presentation and the 14 others we've heard earlier on. Please uh, visit, the, visit the YouTube ch channel, assist us to public, publicize it. That is part of um, our contribution in enhancing HSE in Nigeria. So um, yeah, we will send the slide to you in the next few days. By God's grace, we'll send the slide. We've had a lot of people thanking Prof. Dr. Usman Zaria, thanking Prof. for the excellent presentation, everybody. So we, 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 I think all of us are so happy with um, what we've had today. Although I, I will take, before I round up, sorry, sir, I'm breaking my rule. I'm, there's a professor from my department. I think I, I, want to, I want him to make comments. He has raised his hand since. Professor Mayna, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Uh, thank you very much. Good evening, all. Uh, I just want to make a comment about students disposing waste in the sink, in the lab. Um, what I observe so many times is that our students, when they are doing research, even the postgraduate students, they don't have sessions in their, in their research work about safety. Some of them, if you ask them, do you know what you are releasing in the air, what you are producing? They don't, know, they don't have knowledge of safety of the research work they are doing, both undergraduate and postgraduate. Because my office is not far from the lab. When I see something coming out, I go and ask simple questions. And you find out that most of them they don't have anything about safety of the research they are doing. They don't have anything on impact assessment. So they are just there in the lab. So I think uh, the universities, maybe through NSCHE, they should uh, talk to the HOZs. They can discuss with the HOZ so that they will enforce it. Students do research. They don't have, know the safety precaution of the uh, experiment they are doing in the lab. Even at MSC level, they don't know anything about safety. I think it's very dangerous. So maybe we need to look at that and discuss it. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you, you very bro. much. Thank you, bro. Uh, 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 my, again, I'm breaking law. My very senior colleague, engineer Tukru Lawal, I have to, you have to make your comments from the industri industry. Okay. Aspect. Sir, go ahead, sir. Good morning, my senior colleagues. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Prof, for the presentation. Uh, I still want to reiterate the fact that the industry, the society, the National Society of Chemical Engineers, and academia, they will benefit a lot from advocacy, from engagement. And uh, I, although it's open, I would like to see NSC writing to us saying that they want to visit on our industry. They will come for a site scene. We can discuss. I'm sure it's going to be beneficial. This much I can say. We have a lot of companies in, the, in the Nigeria. We have in Ibeche, Obajana, Boko, anywhere. I think we, we, I would like to host, I would like us to host uh, ESCOs and other stakeholders from NSC to visit our plan and we can discuss uh, issues of interest. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, sir. So at this point, I will hand over to the chairman of my sectoral group, engineer, Mahmoud Bell Bakar to give a recap and a vote of thanks. Sir, over to you. Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. I, I understand when I spoke earlier, I was not being heard properly. Am I yeah. being heard now? 
Ah, yeah, okay. Very well. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, based on the comments that followed, we all is like agree that uh, the presentation was very informative, highly enlightening, and uh, educative. Um, it's not to repeat, it's just to highlight some key uh, take home points. That's from the perspective I'm standing of, like as an outsider for the academics at the moment. He started by defining what outcome-based education is. And uh, the understanding is that the focus should be on the outcome of the teaching rather than on what is being taught. So, and he also went through out of the 12 current BIMAs, eight of them addressed or, 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 or addressed the process safety issues or have a mention of process safety issues. Now, what does this mean? This means that pro process safety is integrated in all our courses or should be integrated. It's not something that should be dealt with as a standalone because there's really nothing that you do that does not have a safety uh, um, uh, aspect. You eat, you are taking your bath, you are wearing clothes, you are working. There's always a safety issue associated with all aspects of our life. So the integration of the BIMAS uh, sorry, the integration of all these process safety issues in this BMAS means that all the courses we are, that are being taught, just like the presenter himself said, who should be process safety and environment should be an integral part. And if this is properly integrated, this will also address the issue that Professor Minor raised about inadequate awareness about researchers. This issue is not only in ABU, it exists in many uh, areas, not only in the universities, even on our roads. I'm somewhere now on the field. I, I joined the, this one when I was on, still on the road. Somebody who just, just threw um, a bottle of water that he finished drinking and it landed on our glass. It's not something solid that could break it. So there's actually a critical issue of awareness. The only way we can bridge this is to integrate in the courses and all this so that the, the students will grow with it. The invitation by uh, Dangote is, uh, is uh, noted. We have uh, 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 Professor Eleta, who is the secretary of uh, the technical committee of the PSI, and she's, 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 she's online. Now, um, also, if I use this opportunity to thank everyone for coming, I can see the interest this generated. I've seen so many people that uh, uh, from the academics, so many professors, uh, Professor Ogumbayo, I'm seeing Professor Williams, although he doesn't want me to say professor, but it's just a matter of time. Um, professor Ojile, also here, there are so many professors that turn up for this Professor Karim from Futiola. So we thank you all for showing up. And um, based on what I've heard today, uh, what we've heard, the, actually, uh, there's going to be a great improvement in process safety approach going forward. The presenter, everyone in the house has thanked you, either through SMS or through those of us that have spoken so um, there's really nothing I can add to that. We really appreciate the, your eloquent uh, the presentation. The organizers, Professor Atai and, and his team, we've been doing a very wonderful job since you took over this uh, assignment. When, they, when we are running it, we record a, a participation, maybe 20, sometimes 30. If we are try hard, we hit 40 today we got over over 60 participants at some, at some point. We thank you everybody for showing up and let's do this again. 
on the next last Saturday of uh, in, in April. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, and God thank bless you very you. much, my able cha chairman. And thank you very much, the speaker. But uh, I will give, um, I will call on engineer, engineer Mustafa Ibrahim, if he's still online, to give us closing prayer. Mustafa Ibrahim. Mustafa Ibrahim, to give us closing Right. We thank God for all he has done. We started this program and uh, it has come to an end. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik, ashara la ila ila anta, wa astaga furka wa atubu ilayk, subhana rabbika rabbil ibadja maisifun, wa salamun ala al-mursaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alimun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everybody for the presentation. As my chairman had said, at a certain point we had over 60 people here. Some of them were as far away as we had two, two or three people, two people from Malaysia. We had two from France, different part of the world today. And of course, we that are locally based in Nigeria, thank you very much for your time. Let's make it a day this, uh, next Maybe month, last week of the month. Atta, I know you are going to share the information later, but if you can also mention the slight adjustment in the timing we discussed in uh, April, and also okay. who the presenter is going to be, at least. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. In um in April, our April presentation is going to be is going to go international. For the first time, we are going to have a we hope hopefully we are going to have a resource person from UK. Um, I'm not sure of his name, is it Dr. Mills or something like that? He will give us a talk last Saturday of the month. But this time around, there'll be a there'll be slight change in time because of Ramadan. Ramadan, it will be in Ramadan during the next month's presentation. So instead of having it from 5.30, 5 .30 to 6.30, we are going to start early because of, the, because of Ramadan. We're going to start from 4.30 to 5.30. And we're going to have somebody from UK giving us a talk on uh, HSE. So please just take note for the, the change, the slight change in the uh, time for, for the month of April as a result of our brothers that will be fasting in the month of Ramadan. Ramadan. When are you going to invite uh, Osman? Uh, sir? When are you going to invite Osman Zaria for, to give his own lecture? No, he's, he's coming on soon. He's coming on soon. He's doing some work behind, a lot of work behind for us. Okay, okay. Mm. So, so keep, a, keep, keep a day with us. And again, we still, we still want more people to give us talk. Please, if you're interested in giving us talk, just send, me a, send a, an email to our HSE, our HSE Gmail, Gmail. I'll book you. I'll book you and give us a talk. Please share your experience from the industry, from the academy. We are waiting for you, waiting, for, waiting to hear from you. Share your experience with us. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Have a thank nice you. weekend. See thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank bye -bye. you, Prof. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, Prof. Everybody, Professor. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Abdesalam Kovo. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bilabino Suleiman.